Hi, welcome back. And it's great also to welcome Bill Thompson to the studio. Great How are you, to Bill? be here. Yeah, good. Now, 10 years you've been involved in a Christian music, I don't want to mm -hmm. say the word business, but I don't know what else <laughs> other words to use right now. So 10 years you've been involved in Christian music, four albums. Does that make you a, a veteran musician? Well, it does make it sound like I've been around for a little while, but I, I mean, I started when I was just straight out of uni, released mm -hmm. my first EP and kept going slowly and surely from mm -hmm. there. Now, the, your, your journey into music started young, didn't it? There was this mm -hmm. sense that your parents said, this daughter of ours, her hands will be blessed to, you know, to make, to, to do something for God. And you've ended up playing piano. What happened yeah, there? Yeah, well, you know, it's funny because my family's actually totally not musical. Okay. And I was actually born with something wrong with my hands. And every night they would turn blue, they'd swell up. And I was booked into hospital to have an operation just as a baby to, mm -hmm. to try and fix the problem. And my parents had just become Christians uh, not long before I was born. And so the night before I was due to have this operation, they'd taken me to church and some of the people there had said, oh, well, have you, have you prayed about it? Mm -hmm. And they're like, really? Like, can you even do that? Does <laughs> God even, even care? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Does God even care? And the people were like, yes, he totally does. So they just prayed for me at church that night and nothing, nothing glamorous happened. My parents took me home and the next morning mum went in to get me ready for hospital and she noticed lying there in my cot that my hands weren't blue. Mm. She's like, that's so weird. And she said she was actually annoyed. She's like, oh, great. The morning of the operation, yep. now the doctors won't believe mm. it. But, this, uh, this is like the car. You take the car to the mechanic. It's yes, making this noise. It's totally got this noise. Exactly. And then it doesn't totally do it. Totally that. Yep. So they, they take me into hospital and the doctors are like, she's totally healed. Wow. And I never needed the operation. And uh, mum really felt that that was, uh, that just really impacted her to mm. understand that God actually really cares about, mm. you know, the details of our life. And my dad said from that moment, he's like, God's going to totally use this girl's hands. Wow. So, wow. Mm. And so when, when did you realize that maybe God's plan for you was, was music? Because mm. you're, you're full time into music now. So this is yeah. not just, you know, leading worship at church on the weekend. Mm -hmm. This is a full time thing for you. When, yeah. when when did it start to click for you? I've, I mean, I started writing songs when I was a teenager yeah. and I I guess very slowly over the years as my faith developed, that mm -hmm. started being expressed in my songs as well. And I okay. just became passionate about sharing the love of God in, in every area of my life. And songwriting mm -hmm. was just one area. But I noticed over time that as I'd, as I'd share music and share the message of, of who God is through music, that that just really had had an impact. So I guess my passion for that really grew. And mm. yeah, it's just like anything in life. I think it develops over time and slowly, gradually. Mm, mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Before we go any further, Belle, how about we just, you know, so our audience can have an idea of your music and, mm -hmm. and what you're doing. Let's just, just pause and just have a quick look at, at one of your clips. Oh, that's great. Do you have other clips um, like available like on YouTube that yeah, people can check out? Yeah, sure do. We just, they're all on YouTube, but we also have some extra ones. We released a DVD this year, mm -hmm. as particularly last year, as we, when we were on tour, we kept having people say, we'd love to hear the story behind the song or okay. at live gigs, I often I'll share a lot of the stories and mm. people are like, oh, I want to get that story from my friends. Mm. And we thought we it'd be great to have a product that where we can really do that and share not just the songs, but the stories behind. So yeah, mm -hmm. DVD, wow. it's got all the music videos and the stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you, you are a, a full time, you're in, you're in full time music ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how does that work? Like, how do you actually make a living? <laughs> well, my husband has a lot to do with that. He's, mm -hmm. uh, he's amazing. I, I love working as a team together mm -hmm. for a start and he's, he's much better at all that side of it. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm good at the creative side. Yep, yep. But uh, I guess, again, it started out very slowly. If you could look back years ago at my first tour, yeah. my goodness, uh, that was. there's been multiple times I've come so close to giving up. And I think with any God dream in anything, not just creative, but any kind of ministry, that it's certainly, uh, there's, it's not an easy path. Yeah. And I yeah. think uh, we really do 
have, have to press into God and, and really know that what we're doing is worthwhile, that, mm-hmm. um, that, that the message that is, is mm-hmm. in the music is so worth getting to people. So back when, when I started out touring, I remember the first gig. So I was willing to go anywhere, mm-hmm. country towns, wherever. And I was traveling with a band at the time. We finally had a church say, yes, we could come. So we drove hours to get there, played this gig and... They, they were like, we're going to take up a special love offering. And I was like, yes, this is going to be awesome. Yep. And at the end, the minister's counting out the coins. And it was like $43. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I think at that point... D- didn't my, even cover the fuel there and back. Totally yeah. didn't. And I think at that point, my band was like, we're going to consider other career options. So now yep. I'm a solo artist. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but no, I certainly learned a thing or two along the way. And I think it is the passion for it that yep. keeps you going and really believing that we can absolutely make a difference as we use our gifts yep. um, for God's purposes. Wow. Wow. So uh, as you're, you're there, you, as you say, you mm-hmm. sing the songs, you tell the stories. You've mm. got a particular heart for women and you've, you've mm. done a lot, a lot of sort of women's conferences, yeah. women's events. Is, yep. there, is there any particular reason or any particular themes that you um, sort of explore mm. in those contexts? I, I think women, it's all about relationships for women. So sure. uh, as I meet women at conferences and, and churches and different events, I think mm. there's often a very big concern for uh, women, just relationships, whether it's their marriage, their children, mm. uh, whether they, they hope to be married one day. Mm. And I think when being able to to remind women how much they're worth to God and, mm. and put the focus on that, I just, I, I love to encourage women. Mm. And yeah. You get a response, obviously you keep doing it. You, you're mm. getting a response from them, I guess from audiences generally. Mm. Yeah, I think music is powerful, really. Yeah. And that's, that's why I do it. Mm. I, I think I first learned this actually, I was teaching an RE class mm. up in Queensland. Yep. It felt like God wanted me to go into, into schools and I was like, oh man, I don't even know if I really like kids, but I felt like God <laughs> was wanting me to do it. Yep. And I learned when I went in, I could talk and no one would listen. But mm-hmm. as soon as I started taking my guitar in, I was right. like, there is something powerful about music. And yeah, those kids yeah. would learn the songs, they'd remember the songs. Ages later, they would still remember those songs. So I, I really learned that if you can, um, combine truth with music. That's just mm. a really powerful combination. Yeah, wow. Mm. So, um, Belle, if people are interested in, you know, checking out um, your albums, mm-hmm. uh, you've got a website? Yeah, bellthompson.com. Okay. That's the best place to go. All right, and wherever good Christian music is, st- is sold. <laughs> now, you, your final, your most recent album, you mm-hmm. actually recorded that in Nashville in mm-hmm. the US, didn't you? Total dream come true. Yeah. I, I mean, for years I dreamed about working with a certain producer, Ed Cash, mm-hmm. who'd I kept noticing his name on some of my favorite albums. He'd done Chris Tomlin, Carrie Joe, Bethany Dillon, Mm -hmm. and a bunch of other stuff. And I I thought, oh, one day I'd love to get to do that. And my husband was like, why don't we email him? And, you know, he's he's the practical one. I'm like, I was just going to pray about it. But (laughs) anyway, we, we were amazed when God opened all those doors. And honestly, it was such a dream come true. We Mm -hmm. did, or it was very different to recording in Australia. My previous albums, we did all pre-production via Skype. Yep. So set up the laptop in my studio here in Australia and worked worked on the songs that way. I mm-hmm. wrote all the songs here in Australia and then we made a couple of trips to Nashville to do the actual mm-hmm. recording. It was honestly I awesome. such a dream come true. Yeah, wow. Mm. Okay, well, and I, you can also, you can see the result, I guess. Mm-hmm. But Nashville, you cannot have... Bell Thompson. We've already got <laughs> enough of our best artists. <laughs> well, that was the cool thing. I got to do a duet with Paul Coleman while I was there because he's living over there now too. Know, so we're I like, know. come here and record on the album. Yeah, well, you can, you can, have, you can borrow, um, yeah, Paul Coleman, but not Bell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. We'll see you after the break. 